Here's Brody Brazil. So if I look extra relaxed in this video, it's because I actually am. Uh, I just got back from a week's long trip to Hawaii. And what was the first proper tropical vacation that I've, I've been able to enjoy with my family, yeah, since 2020 and since the pandemic. And I've just got to say, what was special about this, this trip, it was so anticipated. Because I got to be honest, a lot of times during the darkest of days in 2020, when things were very difficult and there were no clear-cut answers, and my mind would often escape to somewhere I really like, somewhere that was a relief and a release. And that place, mentally a lot of times, was the Hawaiian Islands. I've been lucky enough to, you know, go there enough in my life to have that memory, to bring it back in these difficult times, but to also think about, oh, I would like to be there right now. And so when we actually got to go there, for real, it, it hit just different and so much better and had so much more meaning. Obviously, 2020, we were not going anywhere like that. 2021, we had a, a trip planned. It was not able to happen at a relative later moment. Uh, so to actually do it here in 2022, it just made it so rewarding and so special. And while I was there, I came up with six reasons why I thought Hawaii was perfect. Things I hadn't been able to remember in person until I was there. These are things like plants. Can you say in your everyday life that, you know, in your home environment and atmosphere, that, that the plants like calm you down, they slow you down, they make you realize you're you're somewhere comfortable because plants in Hawaii, to me, they do that. And it's not just the palm trees. I'm talking about all the flowers and bushes and colors. And I'll get into the scents in just a second. But all of these visual stimulations and these, these don't have to be a really nice beach or a great sunset, which is also on my list, or a really beautiful hotel with a view. None of that. It's just the exotic plants that are in Hawaii. Nature, right? When you get there, it's one of the first things you notice, like, oh, I am not at home. And plants are a big part of, of that realization and that relaxation that you may not even realize until you get there. Something that goes along with the plants are the scents, like the smells of Hawaii. And pretty much as soon as you get off the plane, <laughs> you take a whiff in and everything feels fresh and green. And maybe it's because of like the one season year round. It's like spring and summer year round. And there's enough water typically to help the plants grow. And like it's just, it's very fertile, but also the open ocean air. And in places like California, where sometimes we have smog, sometimes we have smoke, I equate it to almost like the inverse of when you go to the mountains and you smell that, that pine smell of the trees. Like Hawaii's different, it's got a different smell but also one that's equally relaxing and calming. And again, these, these are two things that, you know, plants and scents are two things that help you realize you're not at home and they, they subconsciously put you in the mood to relax. Now, by the way, I came up with this list of six things while I was in Hawaii. So if they don't make sense here and now, just remember that they, <laughs> they came from a place of relaxation. The sunsets. Now, you can get other great sunsets across the country at different times of the year. For example, a, a summer sunset in the Midwest, a lot of times with thunderstorms developing off in the distance, you can get some amazing visuals. But that's sometimes. I feel like Hawaii, nine nights out of 10, you'll get a nine out of 10 sunset. Does that make sense? Like you'll get really good sunsets almost all the time. And obviously part of it is that got that horizon, you've got the ocean, the sun is always visible till it goes down and it makes that little green flash at the very end. But, you know, on some nights with different cloud formations and haze layers and the colors, they can all look different, but there's just something about that setting right there. Palm trees as silhouettes and colors and waves hitting you in the near ground while in the distance, you've got that sunset going on. And and the temperature doesn't drop during the sunset hour like it does, you know, either in the winter or in different parts of, of, of the continental United States. Sunsets are always beautiful, casual, 
comfortable and so relaxing. And you do get the time change, which obviously makes it a two hour or three hour or four or five or even six hour difference, depending on where you're coming from in the continental United States. But the fact that you can enjoy sunsets like this almost every night, uh, again, it's one of those things that's, it's not even human made. It's just a natural part of Hawaii that makes it so relaxing. You know, the architecture of Hawaii is also quite special, and I want to separate this. There's there's traditional Hawaiian architecture, which, which you do see in obviously a lot of the older buildings. I guess maybe what I was aiming at more here are some of the resorts and some of the, you know, the places that people stay. They just fit a certain, like, motif. Is that the right word? A theme that just lets you know, wow, this is... And I guess Miami might share a little bit of that same architectural design. But you don't see this in a lot of places around the continental United States. And so, it's it, again, it's one of those things, you know, you see an atrium like this at a hotel like this. And it just kind of makes you feel open and airy and relaxed. And there's usually a lot of seating places. And it's just the architecture, the, the modern architecture of Hawaii. But even, even architecture from the 50s, 60s, and 70s when they started to get into a lot of concrete buildings. And it's, how should I say this? This is modern, but it's not like 2022 modern. It's late 1900s modern, but it's also timeless. These hotels from, you know, the 60s and 70s, they will look like this in the 2060s and 70s. And because of the way they're built, they'll probably hold up too. But it's kind of cool how Hawaii has developed this architecture for visitors in the same way that they have a long-standing history of, of traditional Hawaiian architecture. Up next year, I want to talk about the pace. And this one is human-made, right? Like the pace is something that I think native Hawaiians kind of dictate. This is our island. We do things at, a, at this speed. You know, it's going to take this long to get your, your drink or your food or whatever you're waiting for and you slow down. Like everybody from the mainland, fast, 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 fast. In Hawaii, slow down a little bit. Enjoy this. And, and the pace of Hawaii, again, this is not a natural thing. This is more of a human-made thing, but man, it's just so nice to not have to feel rushed or under a time pressure or like we always do with our jobs. And maybe some of the pace is getting away from your routine, but also getting away from your work, which is sometimes deadline-based, or even school, which is deadline-based for a student or a parent. The pace is something that you forget about Hawaii, where you're, you know, two days, three days in, and you finally settled in, and you just realize and relax, like, wow, I've been going so hard for so long. And until this... Until this slowed me down, I wasn't going to be able to do that all on myself. I like the gecko, by the way. I took that picture in the background. Uh, family friendly. I took this one, too. That's my son taking a little, uh, not a snorkeling look, but he had the goggles on. He was looking at fish in, in shallow waters there on the beach. But let's just say, like, you could take a lot of trips. You could go to Las Vegas. That's a totally different type of trip. There are some trips even across the, the continental U.S. that are not not as family friendly. There's something about Hawaii that kind of just encourages you to have everybody with you, you know, your, your kids, and it's not a not a mom and dad trip. And I guess young single people will go there too, but it doesn't make it not family friendly. There's not a lot of places on the islands where you, you go to, and you know, Oahu's a little bit different. It's, it's not a troublemaking island. You feel pretty good about having and bringing kids there. Kids of all ages, young, infants, toddlers, school-aged, high school, college. Uh, it's a very family-friendly place, and I think that's, you know, now having a family and being on, on the other side of it, it's something I realize and respect and enjoy about the Hawaiian Islands is that it's got a tradition of, of family-friendliness. So those are six reasons why... I think Hawaii is perfect, and I, I've got to say, I told you before how highly anticipated our trip was. At the same respect, I hadn't been on a trip like this in more than three years, and so for the first time in about three years, I got that don't want to go home feeling, you know, and I, I like my life at home. Everything, 
a lot of good things going on here. There's nothing, you know, nothing that really should have put me in that mood other than I had such a good time out there. And so that was an, a nice but unfortunate reminder of, you know, you can enjoy someplace so much that you don't want to leave it. That's a feeling I had not had in, yeah, more than three years. So that's just how good Hawaii is. And those are my six reasons that I made while I was out there on why Hawaii is perfect. <laughs>